Welcome to my video on Tokyo, Japan. Now, before I begin, I'd just like to say that this is not a comprehensive guide to denim in Tokyo. I made this video with the intention to give some perspective on denim culture in Tokyo. It was winter and it was raining dreadfully for two days. But I did manage to capture a few good shots. This is Ibisu. It's located near Ibisu and Daikinyama. I was told that most of the products in store are unsurprisingly made in Japan. However, there were a few racks that had made in China shirts. So it's best to ask where the good stuff is. They have the whole range of Ibisu dry denim in store, where you could opt for a hand painted gull on your back pockets. Bear in mind that this may take 3 to 5 days to complete. A rush job is available at a further cost. Ibisu does not just make dry denim. They produce fanciful fishing tackle and even drivers and clubs. There was a very large formal menswear section in the back that had everything from leather shoes to silk jackets. Daikin Yama is a very trendy street. It houses stores like Gelato and Warehouse Archives. Warehouse had brands like, well, Warehouse, and of course, Pendleton and Hellas Cafe, to name a few. Sorry about my buddy Justin singing there. We move on to Ueno. It is an amazing district that seems to have a little bit of everything. They had pachinko centers, a fish market, lots of street food and ramen, hat stores, jewelry stores, even a BB gun store. Now we come to the real reason why I visited Ueno. Americaya, Kinoya, and General Garden are arguably a denim hit's wet dream. They've got whole sections of Levi's vintage clothing, Scott leather jackets, Buzzwicks and coats, Lone Wolf shoes, Gelato shirts, you name it, they'll probably have it. The denim brands were plentiful. From Denimi to Samurai's to Resolute to the Flathead to the Eternals, the list goes on and on. I had a look at Kinoya's in house brand. Burgers Plus, wound up walking away with a couple of pants. While I was in Tokyo, I decided to look up Tagaya-san of Stevenson Overall Company. He was so warm and welcoming, taking me through his office and to a private showroom for retailers' eyes only, featuring his latest spring-summer collection. It turns out, that Tagaya-san was the first in Japan to use single needle construction on denim 13 years ago, producing a far more durable pair of jeans. Apart from the amazing knits and shirts, there were some incredible accessories like this silver bangle and ring set with Dearborn. This is a range of accessories produced by a different label called Mohawk, also under Tagaya-san. This is Takeshida Street in Harajuku. So many young and fashionable people explore the many cafes and boutiques, even thrift shops this place has to offer. If you're in Harajuku, you must visit RRL. It is like a denim museum. I had the full intention to visit the Goro store. However, the line was six hours long and it stretched for a few blocks down. Instead, I looked at a secret vintage eyewear store at the basement of the same building called Solakzade.
they converted this old swimming pool into a fashion retail store called The Pool by Hiroshi Fujiwara. Although I've only been in Tokyo for such a short while, it's remarkably apparent to me how denim is such a big part of Japanese culture. Just walking down Shibuya, you'll find all kinds of people in denim from undoubtedly varying walks of life. We're not just talking about the full-on workwear bloke, but everyone seems to see denim as a staple part of their wardrobe. I met a beautiful model the other night, and she had on a very form-fitting pair of denim, almost like she was reading the mind. Anyways, this has been a spectacular trip. I hope you enjoyed taking it with me. I'll definitely be hitting back soon. I encourage you to do the same. If you'd like to see more videos about denim, please hit the subscribe button on the right.